In this video, we'll be naming simple organic molecules. Recall that the longest chain is called the parent chain. Things branching off of the parent chain are called substituents. We want to number the parent chain in such a way as to give substituents the lowest possible number. In this particular problem, the way to do that is to number left to right. So be carbon 1, carbon 2, 3, and 4. Now a parent chain which has four carbons is called butane. But you'll notice that this substituent chlorine is located on the second carbon. So the name of this molecule would be 2-chlorobutane. Now the first thing we'll want to do here will be to number the parent chain to give the substituents the lowest possible number. Notice we have two substituents, bromine here and bromine there. The way we can give the bromines the lowest possible number is by numbering right to left. One, two, three, four. This is butane. And we have two bromines. We have one bromine located on the first carbon, and we have another bromine located on the third carbon. So we have two bromines. That's dibromo. So the name of this compound would be 1,3-dibromobutane. Butane is the parent chain, and we have two bromines, and they're located off the first and third carbon. This third molecule has been drawn in such a way to intentionally mislead you. You'll notice that we clearly show there's a bond between these two carbons. But what we don't show clearly is there's bonds between all of the carbons. So what we know from before is that the bonds between all of these carbons are actually 109.5. And when we say it's a straight chain, it's not really straight. All the bond angles have a tetrahedral type shape. So in fact, we really only have one substituent. It's this methyl group here. Because this carbon is part of the parent chain. It's one continuous chain. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the parent chain here would be called hexane. And we have a methyl group located on the third carbon. So that makes it 3-methylhexane. This next molecule has also been drawn in a specific way to try to illustrate a point. So some of the carbon-carbon bonds are shown, others are not. Recall that this is just on, on paper. It's two dimensions. But when we build these, they have a three-dimensional shape. And you know that all of these carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds have a tetrahedral type arrangement. So we have to look for the longest continuous chain. We can do that a couple of ways. However you do it, the name still should come out to be the same. I'm going to choose to number it like this. One, two, three, four. This gives these two substituents, which are both methyl groups, the lowest possible number. They'll be bonded to the second carbon. So two methyls bonded to the second carbon will be 2,2-dimethylbutane. Two, 2,2 two, two, because both methyl groups are bonded to the second carbon and butane because the parent chain has four carbons. Now in this next problem, you notice that there's a double bond and there's a substituent. But you recall that a double bond takes priority over the substituent. The substituent can either be this methyl group here or this methyl group there. Either way is fine. Remember that these are all part of the long chain. You could also include this as part of the long chain. So here's the double bond. The way to give this double bond the lowest possible number is to start by numbering from the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now like I said, either one of these can be our seventh carbon. It doesn't matter which one. 7. So our methyl group is located off carbon number 6. And our double bond is at carbon number 3. The double bond, of course, is between carbon 3 and carbon 4, but when we write the name, we write it as if it's attached to the lowest number, which is carbon number 3. So the parent chain that has 7 carbons in it is called pentane. 
but because it's a double bond, we have to call it pentene. And we also have to say where the double bond is, and it's on carbon number three. And remember, the methyl group, that's attached to carbon number six. So the name of this compound is 6-methyl-3-heptene. This six describes where the methyl group is. It's bonded to carbon number six. And this three describes where the ene is, where the double bond is. It's on carbon number three. Now a problem like this, you might have to make two or three attempts at it just to number it correctly. All right, let's number the parent chain to give the substituents the lowest possible number. And of course, the parent chain has to be the longest continuous chain. So this is the part that's tricky. I've done this before, so I know it's numbered like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now don't get confused now. This looks like it's straight, takes a turn, and then goes straight again. But you know, because you've done models with the ball and stick models, and you know that it's not actually straight, even though it's called a straight chain. You know that there's actually bends and twists all along the way. In fact, there's angles between every carbon. It's 109.5. So this may take some practice, but try a few different ways until you get it right. So we're dealing with heptane. Heptane is the hydrocarbon that has seven carbons. You'll notice that off of the second carbon, we have a methyl group. And off of the fourth carbon, we have an ethyl group. Two carbons is ethyl. So the name of this compound should be 4-ethyl-2-methyl-heptane. Heptane, because there's seven carbons in the parent chain, 4 ethyl because there's an ethyl group attached to the fourth carbon, and 2-methyl, because there's a methyl group attached to the second carbon. Notice that we list the two substituents in alphabetical order. First, ethyl, then methyl.